All right, thanks very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are uh, joining us today. Um, for me, it's uh, late afternoon. Um, as is customary in Australia, I'd like to start by um, acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land on which I join you from, which um, in on the Adelaide Plains here in South Australia, that's the lands of the Ghana people and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, so today I'm talking about how we're starting to engage communities around Australia to, to help grow the um, urban forest. And just go over quickly the, the key problems. So I'm sure everyone's aware of most cities around the world now trying to increase their overall canopy cover target. And there's a lot of work being done by local land managers to plant trees and retain trees on public land. But a lot of the analyses we've done with local councils in Australia find that they're still losing canopy cover overall due to losses on private land, usually from that sort of infill um, development, that conversion of one house into two or two, two or three houses. Um, and this loss of canopy cover on private land really stems from a couple of things. One is negative perceptions around trees. Um, so things like it's just annoying, it's a nuisance, the leaves fall in my gutter or the birds sit in the tree um, over where I park my car and they poop on my car. Um, through to in Australia we have, for example, the, the gum tree behind me are prone to dropping limbs. So there's a lot of fear as well around trees and wanting to remove trees um, from a fear perspective. So we really needed to, in our work with councils and helping them to develop their greening strategies and increase their canopy cover, um, needed a way to really engage the community and get this positive perception shift around trees so that we can help to retain and plant trees on private land, but also gain that community support for public tree plantings as well. So one solution we've come up with, and we've been rolling out now for the last for five or six years um, are our tree tags. So the tree tags are a way of portraying very technical data about tree ecosystem service benefits um, in a very relatable and easily understanding, um, understandable way to the general community. Um, so you can see an example of um, one of our tree tags here in the top right. So it gives a bit of information about the tree itself and then Instead of saying, for instance, the tree provides so many square metres of shade, we convert it into something that people can really relate to quite quickly. So we convert it into the equivalent number of beach umbrellas and people relate to that quite quickly. Similarly, instead of talking about a tree absorbing however many kilos or tonnes of carbon each year, we convert that into a volume that people really can connect to. So often that's rugby balls, or uh, for example, we did some tree tags with um, some of our cellar doors here in the McLaren Vale region, and we did conversions to the equivalent number of wine bottles. So the background to this data collection is we use iTree Eco to model the ecosystem service benefits provided by the trees. And then we use various conversions outside of iTree Eco to convert that technical data into these relatable metrics. And the metrics, as I've mentioned, can be customised readily for each client. The evolution of our tree tags over the last five or six years has included um, these tree tag trails, which is a really fantastic way, especially to engage with the younger um, generation and the, the youth. Um, so it really means that we develop these A5 sort of brochures, which have various activities that the kids can do, like scavenger hunts or places for them to draw or write. Um, but then it's centred around usually a secret message. So as the kids move along the, the tree tag trail and they visit each tree tag, they'll collect um, letters that they put into order and it spells out a secret message at the end of the trail. So it's been a really positive engagement approach um, for the younger generation as well. So this is an example of the diversity of tree tags. This is just a selection of some of the tree tags we've um, helped develop with our clients. Um, they range from in size from sort of A4 size. Um, so this one here for Onkapringa Council is an A4 size, for example. Most of them are at an A3 size. And then Sunshine Coast Council in Queensland decided they wanted to go one step bigger and better. And there's an A2 size uh, tree tag there. But you can see just how 
diverse they can be in their design, how flexible they are in design and also information. Um, and it really allows you to customise the tree tags for the client, but also for the community. Um, and I think one of the really important things around tree tags, if you're familiar with the iTree Eco tools, so iTree Eco allows you to quantify ecosystem service benefits and also put a, a market value on those benefits. And one of the things we really wanted to do with our tree tags is not include the dollar value of the benefits. So we really didn't want to reduce the benefit of trees to a monetary value. And this is why we've really come to this sort of conversion to really relatable metrics. They've proved a, an excellent opportunity for various other engagement opportunities as well. So everything from training community groups or council um, members, even um, getting into the schools and teaching them how to measure the trees and collect the data themselves that we need for the iTree Eco modelling. Um, and this is a really great way to get the community and the kids involved and really um, build that stewardship um, around the outputs. The example on the right here is an example where um, the local libraries were also brought into the mix and, and the engagement. So this particular library um, had these lovely glass windows that overlooked the park where we had a tree tag trail. And we had some opportunities in the library for the kids to go in and write what they love about trees on these cut out hands. And while the tree tag trail was up and active, um, you actually saw this cardboard sort of tree hands growing in the library as well, which is a really nice connection there with the library and the community. So they've become increasingly popular. Um, so we've delivered a number of projects across Australia um, for a range of clients. It, it started out um, primarily with local councils and, and they're still our largest client base, but it's also grown now to include schools, um, community groups, businesses, and also most recently, um, one of the state governments. And I just wanted to include as well in this um, bottom left corner here, um, I was invited in late 2019 to present on our tree tags to the uh, second European iTree conference in Sweden. And as a result of that, um, we've had a group, one of the leading um, tree care groups in Europe, uh, start developing tree tags as well in, in a similar fashion to ours um, and start rolling them out across Europe, the UK and Ireland, which has been really fantastic to see. And there's a link there um, where they've actually mapped some of their tree tag locations, which is really cool to see. And the big question, has it really helped though to change that perception of trees? And overwhelmingly from the surveys that we've done, um, the answer is yes. People love them. They think they're a great idea. Um, a lot of the feedback we get is they would like to see more information about the trees on the tree tags. Um, but it's really when I get to talk to some of the community members about the tree tags and witness firsthand this 180 degree in sort of perception shift. So for example, one, um, one council, I was hanging tree tags for Adelaide City Council and they've chosen a particularly old, pretty poor looking tree well into senescence um, to tag. And they've chosen it mainly because it sat on a very busy street corner with a lot of foot traffic. Um, one of the metrics that we had on the tags were, were age. So you could tick whether the tree was um, a junior, a teenager, an adult, or a senior. So I had an elderly gentleman cross the street to talk to me about the tree tags and ask what we were doing. I explained it to them and he sort of said, oh, well, this tree's not doing so well, is it? And I said, no, no, it's not doing so well. And he read the tag, saw that the senior box was ticked, and he went, oh, well, it's a senior. It's got a right to not look so good. And he walked off and he had straight away made that personal connection with the tree and was looking at it in a completely different way. And it's those sorts of things that I really love, love to see. So I'll leave it at that. I wanted to keep it short and sharp, an overview for you so that we had some time for questions or discussions if you wanted to.